and AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. Anyway, we're live on Facebook. Hello, everyone who is uh, on. We've uh, got an exciting uh, session, so make sure you, you jump on. Um, if you can't hear me, uh, you won't be able to hear what I'm explaining, but just click on the video so you can uh, so you can listen. If you're having any issues, just put them in the comments um, and we'll try and Jackie will sort it out uh, live. Um, but give us feedback after this session to let us know how you went. So we're super excited. We've got 250 plus people in the Facebook group. So that's going gangbusters. What else is going on? We're going Facebook live now instead of using Zoom. Uh, as of last week, um, so everyone who watched it live last week would know, and it is getting uploaded to YouTube, so you can watch the replay on YouTube as well. Um, the Brizzy event is coming up really soon, so make sure you register for that. Um, and just want to shout out to our friends at AIA for um, for making XY Life happen. Um, so today we've got a really exciting uh, guest uh, that's. Uh, me and Ray are both doing video, um, so it's good that uh, we've got our personal uh, consulting session with Chris McCarty. Um, Chris is from uh, Story Driven Media, um, and just wants to open up to you, Chris. What do you guys do at Story Driven? Thanks so much, Phil. That's great. It'll be really, really, really great to be here. Um, to give you a bit of background, so I'm a cinematographer by trade, so that's what I've been doing for about 12 years. And in the last couple of years, um, Dennis and I, we co-founded Story Driven. And what Story Driven is, is it's a, it's a marketing meets video content creation platform. So one of the things we found when we were doing work with other video production companies before was that there wasn't really that in-depth relationship with the client. We didn't get to really understand their business needs and objectives. And really for a long time, video was so new, was so great that just having a video meant that it put your your business up that next level but i mean as you know now with facebook live with it being so easy to create content which is great it just makes it so much more competitive so how do you stand above above the crowd above all that noise and that's where we come in have those chats really understand how video can play its role um in in solving your, your problems and how you can connect with your audience and so that's what we do we create engaging content and then we look at the marketing strategies around it because just having a video is not enough. You have to actually know how to take it to market, know your audience, get out there, and um, and the right people will then um, will chat with you and, and go from there. Ah. I put myself on mute for the first time. Like, <laughs> should learn. Never put yourself on mute, Phil. You've never done it before in your life. Don't start now. Um, <laughs> So video more and more is becoming uh, a big part of, you know, the way people are doing business. And this topic's all about, you know, how to effectively use video in your advice business. Um, so let's just go into the hardcore practical uh, side of video. So lots of questions about, you know, what type of gear we should be looking at buying. So someone who's uh, ready to go, uh, really keen to start video, what type of gear should they be looking at? What's 100% necessary and what's maybe a, if you're really committed, maybe buy this over time. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Well, the great thing is, is uh, what's in your pocket? Most likely an iPhone. They're fantastic. Look, to get started, um, they're great. The trick is just making sure you've got some nice light on you and you've got a good microphone. Rode make this $60 mic. It just plugs straight into the phone. And really, for, for that, for $60 plus your phone, you're up and racing. Um, from there, you can start looking at the digital SLR cameras. There's the mirrorless cameras now. So, <clears throat> excuse me. There's lots and lots of tools out there. So you can really start small and build up. I definitely recommend have a go with the iPhone first. Get someone to help you um, because beyond the gear, you, it's, it's that, well, what am I talking about? What am I communicating? And it's, you know, the last thing you want to do is spend thousands on equipment and then suddenly go, oh, I don't know what to talk about. So I think it's great. Just get the phone out, get started um, and just ask for feedback. Ask for what people want to hear. 
um, because you're the expert, like you know certain areas and you just want to communicate that. So that's where we begin. Just, just on that, should we be um, buying like a tripod and sitting it on our desk or doing the whole uh, selfie look? Yeah, that's a very, very good point, Phil. So as, as I'm sure you guys know, there's the little camera on the front and yeah, you can, you know, do the old, the old selfie look, but you know, for Facebook Live, it can work quite well, but um, it's very important. And this is a, a big part is that every bit of marketing you do, whether it's an email that you put out, a video you put out, a newsletter, it communicates your brand. So it's very important that you're happy with the quality that it represents. So what I definitely recommend is here, you definitely use the camera on the back. And there's this little grip that you can get that holds the, holds the phone in place. And then that just goes straight into a tripod. And the trick is, yeah, get someone to help you because the best sort of looking frame is one where the phone's just a little bit, it's going to be out of your reach. And because you flipped it around, you're not going to be able to see your image. So they're able to make sure you're well framed. The light's right. They can also listen in, make sure the audio from your microphone's working. So there's a few little extra accessories. So what I'll do at the the end of the webinar, I'll, I'll shoot across a list of all these little things you can buy. And we're talking a couple of hundred bucks and you can be up and running with a, um, with a great looking shot. Oh, that's, that's perfect. Um, just to get a little bit technical, because lots of, lots of film people talk about this, like, you know, just get good light, get good framing. And it's like, well, <laughs> what is good light? What is good framing? Um, that's it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's great you mentioned that, Phil, because a little while ago, um, we actually put together a little video on how to sort of shoot like a pro with an iPhone. And we, we talked through that. So in a few minutes, you get a real sense of um, uh, that, that sense of a frame, you know, it's a matter of going, so as you can see, you know, we're, we're all making sure that we can be well seen, you know, we're not like this. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not shooting like that. It's just about finding that nice, comfortable, comfortable position where you can engage with the audience. And, um, and so, yeah, well, um, yeah, the video look, talk, talks it through because you're absolutely right, Phil, like it's second nature to me because I've been doing it for so many years. So yeah, with these few tips and tricks, um, it'll put your, your content a ahead of the game. And then it's one of those things, yeah, with, um, so framing's one element, lighting's another, and we talk about, okay, try and find some natural lighting in your office, um, or like where, where there's a nice, nice window or then you can go a bit further and start buying lights. So um, it's just, I mean, the, the key thing is, is just have a go, give it a crack. People are understanding, as long as you're, you're presenting well and you're talking with enthusiasm and passion and you have something good to say, people will forgive, you know, the odd bad light or the odd bad thing here or there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. People, yeah people, people are very forgiving with you know, mm. bad quality, I, I, I find. Like, it doesn't need to be you know, like a movie. Um, to mm, do that. Mm. And, you know, the first one's always going to be bad. Just like, you know, we're, as advisors, our first client meetings, if we had a recording of that and look back at it, it would have been woeful. Um, that's it. So yeah. No, you, you, one out of the way. That's it. Yeah. It's just about getting that first one done um, because there's so many things that you can, that can stop you from doing it. And I think that's, that's the most heartbreaking thing you're seeing when you go to all this effort and all this trouble and that's why having that person there to help you is so, is so useful because not only are they there to check the framing, make sure the audio is right, but they give you that encouragement and, you know, they can see um, if you need to bring your energy levels up or whatnot. Mm. Um, the other thing, just in, in terms of a practical sense, the platforms, how do we host it? Do we host it directly on all social media? Uh, do we host it on our website and always link to our website? So that's mm. another Big question. That's that's how do we host the the videos that we record? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, look, there's so many options now. Um, I think the first part is to look at where your audience is. Like, where have you got some engagement? Um, so the great thing, obviously, Facebook Live um, is and like on through Facebook is is a great platform because we're all people. You know, that's the the thing about financial advice is. Whilst there's a lot of technical things and people are, you know, it's, there are, they are touchy-feely subjects. Um, at the end of the day, you're just communicating ideas, you're providing value. And if you can gather your audience through these platforms, they'll engage with you and that's, and that's where they can be found. Um, if, you know, you're not yet on the social channels <clears throat> with the work side of things, if, you know, your Facebook's just friends and family and not so much prospects, 
that's where your website's going to come in handy. And the key thing there is making sure that landing experience um, is enjoyable. So if someone's looking for advice or say, um, you know, someone's referred like a friend as uh, some, one of your clients has referred a friend and that friend comes to your website, you want to make sure that they, they know, okay, this is who you are, this is what you're about, and then they can easily check out your videos and get a sense of who you are. And that's, that's one of the critical things about, about this sort of, uh, about creating your own video is it's, it's more than just what you're talking about. It's who you are as a person um, because people nowadays want to know who they're going to go into and have a meeting with. You know, one of the biggest challenges is, you know, if you're just looking and comparing CVs, what are the differences? Like who's going to really be able to help me with, with quite personal issues. And so by being able to check out some videos, get a sense of who you are, um, they'll feel like they've already met you. And it's something that we've really found has been really great for our business, you know, because, you know, we're in that competitive space as well. You know, there's a lot of other people that do video, video production that when people see our content, they immediately have a sense of who we are. And so when we pick up the phone and they've seen me on a video, or they see Dennis on a video, it just takes it from that cold call and, and the relationship just goes so much smoother. Mm. But sorry, Phil, I went on a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a direction there in terms of, so yeah, your platforms, yeah, it's making sure that the landing experience is there and that people can easily get to the content. Yeah. But there's no, I guess, uh, just to recap, there's no real hard and mm. fast that needs to be on your website and you need to push people there or vice versa. I, I think the key thing is you're putting so much time and effort into writing, shooting, cutting it down. Um, each, each, each video that you're crazy not to get it out to multiple platforms. So whenever you produce a piece, definitely pop it up onto YouTube. And then that's very easy to, that people can see you've got so much great stuff. I mean, like yourself, Phil, so much, so much stuff there. People can see that you're constantly providing more and more value. Once you've done that, upload it directly to Facebook. People love just going through the feed and, and seeing these things pop up. So, you know, if you're doing it weekly, then you know, okay, upload to YouTube, upload to Facebook. There are some other uh, uh, platforms out there. There's Vimeo and there's Wistia. Um, I love Wistia for its sort of business tools that it has. So I'd either recommend when you're hosting onto, well, when you're putting onto your website that you do either a link back to YouTube as you're building up that platform. But if you really want to know how well people are engaging with your content, that's where Wistia comes into play. Now it's not cheap. But the great thing there is, is say, say your plan is to do 10 videos. You, you, you recognize you're pretty busy. Let's just get 10 out there and see how they go. You pop those 10 videos into Wistia, you pop them on your website, and then you can actually see exactly what people watched. If they only watched for the first 10 or 15 seconds and then stopped, did that person watch multiple videos? Because it literally is the crazy thing with Big Brother watching, you know, it tracks your it tracks your IP. So you can literally see down to a location level who's watching it, how long they've watched it for. And what that provides you is that feedback. Are you, you know, are you getting to the point straight away? Are you providing great value? And then at the end of the video, there's compelling ways that you can actually capture people's information. Because I mean, let's face it, at the end of the day, you want to actually capture leads through through this content or know that you're providing value to your current customer base. So really having that understanding of why you're putting the content out there is very important. Hmm. Um, so so as it, uh, sorry, apologies for cutting off and, and, and do cut me off if you, if you cover this before. One of the things I'm, I'm quite keen on, um, you know, something that we're sort of looking at. So we do a bit of video to our existing client base and that seems to work really, really well. One thing that we're, we're looking at starting to do through Facebook Live and a whole bunch of things is, um, you know, marketing to leads and prospects. But it's a little tricky because we don't, we don't necessarily know what the audience wants. Um, and, and we're, you know, we're sort of, we're sort of trying to preempt that, but do you, do you sort of have a view around how you would maybe think about a marketing plan that involves videos to a particular market? Is there, is there a way that, you know, if, if you're a young advisor, how you might, might start to put together a strategy rather than, you know, uh, putting up a whole bunch of videos where there's, you know, you and your mum part of the group? <laughs> um, absolutely. That's a fantastic question, Ray. I mean, the, the start of that thinking really comes down to is, 
who is your favorite client? I mean, if in an ideal world, um, you would have a hundred or 200, whatever the number that, you know, in terms of how big you want to grow your business, you would literally have a hundred or 200 of the exact same client. Obviously different people keep it, keep it interesting, but there are certain personality type. They, 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 they respect what you do. You know, they, whenever you need something done, you know, obviously it's an ideal, but essentially it's a matter of looking at, okay, who's your best client in the sense that you're getting them results. Um, they're referring you more people and, they're the sort of people that you want to communicate to. Um, one of the big things that, that we've learned in business is that, you know, when you're trying to get more business, it can be scary because you don't want to exclude anyone. But the reality is if you're trying to talk to everyone, you're really talking to no one. So know who your ideal customer is and make content directly for them. That's the um, because, paradox, isn't it? Because, you know, mm, if you're a young advisor, you, you're kind of trying to help everyone and be a, a master of, of everybody, but you end up kind of being yeah, a master of none, rather, sorry. So you know, they, we've had people on these XY lives before that say, you know, go narrow and deep, like work out who mm. you is or the ideal client, the one that you like to work with and, and, you know, talk to that person so you can track more of them. That's it, yeah, because the thing is like, just like when you're trying to find a GP, or let's say you've got a, like a, um, a, you need to get surgery done. You want the best person for it. And it's the same with financial advice. You don't want to go to someone who kind of services everyone. You want someone who specifically works in that particular area. So for myself, I'm recently married. We've got a property. We're looking at kids. I found that we're not quite there yet um, with certain types of advice because, you know, we, we don't quite see the value in it yet because we haven't, well, we haven't got the kids yet. So we don't have that, um, those risks. Um, we luckily got into the property market at a time when it wasn't as ridiculous as it is now in Sydney. So mortgage is not, not too bad. So, um, and we're, we're quite good at managing debt and things like that. So because we've got a handle on certain things, um, our need um, isn't as great, but for a lot of other people out there in, in you know, at my age, you know, recently married, may have some debt, um, wants to get into the property market, wants to go traveling. And, you know, especially now, you know, like, oh, I don't like my job. I want to change. I want to do this. Um, the need is great for those sort of people. And if you love working with those sort of people, then that's who you need to communicate with. And it's, you know, whether it's, you know, because people, people love going traveling. They, they, they want to buy stuff, but they really need to understand how they can do that along with everything else. So if, they're the people you want to talk to, then create content around that. Um, because, you know, if you put a video out there that says, look, I can guarantee you with these tips or whatnot, that you'll be able to go on that $5,000 holiday every year kind of thing. And they go, oh, yeah, I, I want that. I, I'm always struggling to do that holiday. And then drilling down, it becomes just about managing budgets and things like that. But if you go straight away out there and go, this is how you manage your budget, um, I'm lucky. I, I enjoy numbers and things like that, but my wife just not yeah. interested, just absolutely not interested. So like she hates the B word, the, the budget um, <laughs> at, at home. And, and I'm sure that's, that's what happens in, in a lot of couples. You know, one person doesn't want to deal with it. The other person's happy to deal with it. And as long as there's that, that communication, um, that's one of the, the big things is that you, you, you don't need to communicate to both of these people at the same time, but you just need to be able to communicate to, to you know, the, the husband or, or the wife um, because then they're going to bring up the topic at the dinner table and that's where, you know, they both come in together and you take it from there. Mm, makes, makes good sense. Um, uh, Phil, I don't, I don't know if this is a question that you, you might have had. One of the things that, you know, is, is, is you don't know what you don't know. Like advisors just don't mm. know cinematography. Um, mm. I guess I'd be kind of keen on learning, you know, some of the things that you definitely, like what makes a bad video? What are some things that you just shouldn't do? Um, mm. you know, is, there, is there sort of common things that you see like, you know, this could be cleaned up so easily if you just change the settings or whatever. I don't, yeah. <laughs> mm. ab ab absolutely. Yeah. So there's definitely, an, and look, the little, the, the series of videos that I'll, I'll share with everyone will certainly tick off some of those areas so that when you get started, um, you've, you've addressed those, those areas, but the critical, like, as, as we we're talking before, 
people are very forgiving um, of the content. Like obviously if it's really bad audio and they can't hear, it's really shockingly lit that they're not going to want to watch. But so long as the content is of value to them, they'll keep engaging. So really, you know, the, the, the critical thing is that you know who you're talking to and it's about how do you get that content in front of that person. Um, the great thing, one of the things that we're doing with our, with our clients now is using Facebook lead ads. It's a really great tool where, you know, you have your video content, you know who your, who your audience is, who your target market is, and you really narrow that down. You have an idea of when they're likely to be on Facebook, when that sort of content is going to be of interest to them you know, at the end of the day or at lunchtime kind of thing. And you write some compelling copy, you address a pain point or you address one of their anxieties or you talk about a benefit and they go, oh, that looks interesting. They watch the video and that's, that's what keeps them, keeps them going through. And then there's that, then that next section of copy, which elaborates on that. And if you're able to create, if all those elements line up, they'll click through the link and then it's a matter of having a chat or if, um, because that is you know, a, a bit of a hard sell, you can then go, look, is this, is this, you know, addressing some of your, your concerns? Look, we've got all this other content. How about you check this out? And that brings them into your, your sphere of influence and you're able to um, drive them value. Because that's the thing. One of the big things about financial advice is it is quite expensive, um, you know, and that is a big, a big challenge um, for, for young families. Well, it's a challenge for anyone, but um, especially when you, if you want to get into it early as opposed to, coming in later and having to fix up a lot of things, um, that value needs to be there. And in seeing that you're able to provide that value just through Facebook, through emails and whatnot, um, if, if you're able to, you know, give them some ideas that they can then find ways to fix some of their budget problems, for example, then when you start the conversation, you're already on that same page. Um, so that's what's quite critical. There's a lot of advisors, um, th you know, thinking about doing video, but one of the big questions is like, why, why do I do video? Like it takes a lot more time. It's like, mm. really hard. If I can just do a blog post, it's the same kind of realm of content. I'm producing something. I'm getting in front mm. of people. Um, why mm. do a video instead of doing a blog post? That's a great question, Phil. I mean, because yeah, as you say, all all the time and the investment, the, the the lighting, the shooting, and all that kind of stuff. I think the thing is, uh, people love video. Um, blogs still have their purpose, and people will still um, invest time in it. I mean, it's one of those things you you best to do a bit of both and see what works. Um, I think that the real key difference is is that if you were to put a video of yourself talking through, and then an exact replica of that content in a blog, people are more likely to engage in, in the video. The byproduct of you, it being you presenting it and people seeing that energy and enthusiasm is that it puts, it elevates your position. Um, because really anyone can talk about tax stuff, but it's about how you do it and the way you do it. Um, that's what makes the difference. And it is, it's one of the things, yeah, it is challenging doing it yourself and that's where then you can look at video production services and that's where you got to weigh up, okay, what's, what's the, what's the investment look like? Um, you still got to create the content. Um, so there's still that time investment. So it really then comes down to why am I doing it? What is the purpose? Um, and what we, what we, what we feel is that the, one of the best ways that you can get started is to have that content that's going to attract new leads um, or at least attract so attract leads that you can then um, take on that journey further and drive more value and that's where your self-generated content comes in so because it's very important that you feel comfortable that the quality of the content you're putting out there speaks your brand mm. are so, there thresh sorry sorry phil go no, right jane go mate I was going to ask are there there thresholds because you know again you know when, when we try and work at our videos we we generally take the rule that short is better. Um, but, you know, are, are, there, are there thresholds? Because sometimes I'm keen to watch a five-minute video. Sometimes I just want to know the key points. Sometimes I'm, I've got half an hour set aside, and I, you know, like an XY Live is an example. Um, mm. you know, are there sort of thresh points? Like, you know, people will either watch a 60-second, a five-minute, or 20, like, you know, what, what are there mm. yeah, lines in the sand? I think um, 
I think the key thing is that as long as it's continually engaging, people will keep watching. Um, okay. I know, I know there are concerns. Oh, like, you know, you start a video, oh, geez, it's 10 minutes. I don't have 10 minutes, but as long as it's compelling, people will keep watching. The other element I would say is that when someone's, when you've got their emotional buy-in, they're going to watch more. And that's where, you know, the common strategy is expose people to a 30 second piece about who you are, what you do, why you do it, how you can help them. And they go, wow, that was, that was useful. Okay. Click to find more. Then you can have like a three, four minute version, which, you know, really talks about how your brand is unique in the market. Who are the people that you, that you service the best? Um, and you can include clips from your clients, you know, the whole element of social proofs and case studies meet the team so that people go, oh, okay, this looks like a, like, like a good group. And they, they speak to me and I, I recognize myself in that person. I could really utilize help in that way. Um, but then in terms of, yeah, the longer content, that's if someone say is, so they know about you, they know that you've driven some value for them. Um, but they just want to digest it on their own time. You know, they don't want to reach out and go, hi, I've, I've, I need help with my finances, but they want to learn because, you know, we're in a culture now where everyone just wants to soak up things. The trick is, and that's where all the, the digital marketing comes in is how can you optimize the experience to encourage people to actually go, you know what, I do have an issue. No, it can't wait. Let's get on the phone and have that chat. And that's where it's about video is a great tool. People get to know you, people get a sense of who you are. Then when they get on the, then when you get on the phone with them, they'll be a lot more receptive to talk about the issues they're having. Um, you can then qualify them there and then. Um, are you a right fit? Are you not? If you are, okay, let's continue the conversation from there. Because the, the key thing is you want the time you invest in doing video to pay off in having less initial consultations that don't go anywhere. Mm. I think for me, one of the conversations I had just the other day with another advisor talking about content is um, it, it is daunting doing video content and the, you know, the amount of work involved, but and really the most important thing is distributing and getting like, you can make the best content in the world. It's the mm-hmm. best, most amazing audio, but uh, you get your mum viewing it. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. it. Um, mm. so distribution is hugely important in this space. You can have a less, uh, you know, ideal content, but as long, if you're distributing it better, it'll do well. Like you talked about Facebook lead ads. I, I've got no idea what that is. Mm. Um, mm. I'm sure that's kind of a way to help distribute content, but are there any kind of easy wins as advisors who have done maybe one or two videos um, who can think about distributing it better instead of just spamming it out to all platforms and hoping they get a few likes? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Phil. Um, and that's often the challenge with these, these digital strategies is how do we get those quick wins? Um, I think a big part of it is a matter of looking at, okay, where are you in that process? Are you like, are you a business that's um, more traditional, been offline, word of mouth, and you haven't even stepped into the digital realm? You know, maybe your website's very out of date or you haven't got one, you haven't got onto the platforms yet. That's that's a real challenge. Um, It's kind of looking, I would actually recommend looking at other things before launching into video. I mean... But that said, look, there's, there's a lot of tools out there now where literally you can, it's, it's, it's known as landing pages. So instead of having the traditional website of the multiple pages, you can literally just have this one page, which can just be a header, a video of you, and then a, a capture form. And then the trick then is then how do you then drive people to that page? So it's the, the multi-stepped approach. Um, if you've already got a bit of a following, if you, you know, your, your business has a Facebook page, um, some quick wins are talking about the success that you get for clients um, and, and showcasing people's success. You know, if, um, you know, it's just about having a conversation with your client. Um, I do find those, you know, traditional testimonial videos. The tricky thing about them is that, you know, if you're doing the interviewing, of course, they're going to say how amazing you are, how great this and that is. But if you're able to make it a bit more of a conversation and, you know, talk about where you were before, where you're now with, with the help that we've, we've given you, it's through that that, um, you know, asking for, for referrals from, from those people on social, that's going to get you a quick win. So um, produce something around 
how you're providing them with value, how you've managed to, you know, help them buy their second investment property, um, clear all their credit card debt or whatnot, because get that out on the platforms and ask your customers, ask your clients to share that content. You know, if they're, if they've got value from you, they're your advocates. They share it. It goes onto their social feeds. Then when someone goes, Oh, that's my, my mate, they, they, they got some results. Oh, you know, I really need to look into this. That's, that's where you're going to get that quick win. Yeah, cool. Um, if, you're, if you don't have a big budget for this stuff and you're kind of doing it on your iPhone but you want to do some editing, like I use the, the movie editor that comes with the laptop. Um, mm. are, there any, are there any sort of cool programs that you've come across that you know, aren't, aren't thousands of dollars that you know, we can all have a play with and it spits out some pretty cool stuff? Well, I have to admit, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming if, as long as you're on a Mac, um, iMovie is, is a great platform. Um, having been editing for 10, 12 years, it was great to actually, okay, start from scratch. Does this make sense? Could someone who doesn't know any editing work around it? Um, the trick is to, to start simple. Um, so, yeah, one, one of the little videos we put together sort of just takes you through the absolute basics of, okay, taking your clips from your iPhone, uh, chop the beginning, chop the end, or if you want to put two together in a little transition, bang, put that in and then export it and then get that onto YouTube or whatnot. So um, it's like the three minute videos and it's pretty quick and easy, but at least it's better than having you uh, look at the program and go, how do I use it from there? Um, that's, that's more than enough. Um, you know, Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what we use for all our work, it's relatively inexpensive now because you can get it on subscription but it has tools that you're just not going to need. I mean, I thought you if, were going to um, say you could get it on Pirate Bay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those things now. I mean, look, because, yes, they used to be really expensive and you know, I, I did a little sneaky for some years back. But, <laughs> um, but it's because it's constantly updated. It's, it's a relatively small, small investment. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's important to do the right thing eventually. I mean, I'm on, I'm on Netflix now. I, I don't, I don't download stuff anymore. I'm just, I used to, in the old days, used to download, download, but at the end of the day, I mean, you know, you're running a business, uh, you want things to work. It's a yeah. small investment for that. Yeah. Yeah. And these, sorry, Chris, these videos you're talking about there on your, your blog, uh, what I'll do is, um, so we actually had, we, we actually created a small little Thinkific course um, that we sort of put out to a few people to test it. The, the main thing that we found actually was uh, engagement. Um, so it was a, a series of videos that talked through this stuff and actually spoke about, okay, here are the bits and pieces you want to buy. And the feedback that we got, and it wasn't so much that people told us this, it was more, this is the power of these platforms is it tells you exactly who logged in, how much they watched, what they did. It was this recognition of that, even though, you know, half an hour of content, pretty easy to get through, it's still making that time commitment. And that's where you got to weigh up. Okay, sit down, spend a few hours, learn it and, and do that. Or are you much better off doing things which are going to get you better results in the business? And that's where it's a matter of looking at, okay, do I want to partner up with a video, like a videographer, um, a video production company, or say an agency sort of level, which is where, we, where we're at. Um, and obviously, yeah, they all come at different, at different investment levels. Um, I think the key thing is that if you're going to get this done externally, you want to make sure you're having those conversations. Like your supplier has to ask you why, you, like has, has to ask what is the problem that this content is going to solve? Who are you communicating to so that you're able to finish that conversation knowing exactly what you're going to, like, obviously you've got to craft the content, but know what you're going to talk about and most importantly, know how you're going to distribute it, know who you're talking to. Because um, it's heartbreaking when you know, hear stories where people have gone, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll get this person, they've got some great content, they shoot good stuff, you know, four or $5,000, $10,000, Thank you for the video. Ah, I don't know what to do with it. So it's, it's, and that's, that's really, that's, that's where we place our point of difference is that we make sure that you get an outcome. Um, and we know what success is, you know, if for you, it's getting, okay, I want to get 10 leads in and, you know, if, if, if oh, sorry, 10 clients in, um, and if a client's worth five or eight K in their first year, that's, that's where you then look at, okay, what is the investment worth? 
Um, so a big part of it is, okay, what is, what is the lifetime value of a client and what therefore is a realistic investment to make in video digital marketing? Mm. Yeah, one thing, one thing that I talk to advisors about, because um, advisors always ask the question, what's the ROI? What's the ROI? And you're like, mm. we, we tell clients to invest for long term and we say, you know, put, make an investment, invest often, uh, don't look at your returns in six months, don't look at your returns in two years, just trust the system and keep doing it over a long period of time. Yeah, sure, we'll, look, we'll talk about performance long term, but you look at your investment within, a, you know, an index fund or whatever, whatever investment portfolio it is, mm. and in six months' time it isn't performing, you're not going to just sell off um, and then go, well, that didn't work. There was no ROI on that because, like, you know, $100,000 investment only made me two, three, four grand or whatever the case might be. But we do that when we look at marketing in, in videos. We go, oh, I put one video out and there wasn't an ROI on that. It's like, well, mm. okay, these things are kind of can be evergreen content. You can improve it over time. And if you're investing in your business um, over the long period of time and often, then you're going to see a return on that that isn't just an immediate I'd spent five grand, you know, paying Chris to do a video for me and the next mm. week I didn't have a client. Um, so, you know, that's, that's my rant over, but, um, I did have a question. What that's a are the, great point. Um, what are the different options for advice businesses? Like going from, you did mention using outsourcing your video production or going to an agency, um, mm-hmm. DIY. So what do you see as kind of the, let's say the three key options for advice businesses to start doing video? Absolutely. Mate. Well, the, the package that we're building at the moment and where we're, we're taking our business with, with all our clients is first of all, first of all understanding where, where, where you're struggling in business, what, you, what, what do you want to achieve, what does success look like and we see if, okay, if video or a campaign of videos is going to help you with that. Then we partner you up with one of our digital agency partners and the product there is taking that content, knowing specifically who that audience is and testing, getting out there, doing split ads, all, all, all this technical digital marketing sort of stuff. Um, and we're able to actually get results and, and see what's working and what's not within the matter, matter of days or weeks, depending on what, what, what the little components are. So that particular product is, I mean, it's something that ideally and where we're, building towards actually having it be a investment price per lead you know we're building it to an extent where we'll be able to say to you say to you well for this price we'll get you a lead so how much is a lead worth to you or sorry how much is a client worth to you knowing that you've got your your sales conversion that we feel is the most it's it means that you're investing your time doing the things that are going to grow your business in terms of as leads come in, you're qualifying, you're addressing what their concerns are and bringing them on board the books. Um, as opposed to just that scattergun approach of, okay, I'll, I'll do a little bit here, a little bit on the blog, a little bit here, a little bit there. And, and it's really hard to, to then know what results you're getting. So that's where, um, we, we, we very, very much feel that, the key, if you're going to invest money in video, the best way to do it is promote your brand. Know, have, let people know your point of difference. What makes you different? Who are you communicating with? And use that to get, to attract, to attract clients to your business. And then you do what you know to get them through. Once you've got that worked out, then it's about going, okay, let's look at, how we can further refine that. Let's look at ways that we can then in continue to engage your existing audience. And that's where the, the do it yourself content comes alive because you're able to constantly keep up to date with your clients. You know, like it should be a matter of touching base monthly uh, with them to make sure that they keep on track. And that's where that sort of content comes in handy. And it's through that, that they're going to then refer their friends and family on board. Um, it's because the tricky thing now is that with um, there's so many video production suppliers out there, is there's huge differences in the amount that you can pay. Um, but ultimately the results you get are 
how you distribute it, how you get it in front of the, uh, the right audience. So um, I think that the key thing is, is making sure that you're having these conversations, you know um, what, the, uh, what anxieties and what benefits, uh, addressing anxieties and, and talking about the benefits that advice is going to give. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did have a few questions uh, on Facebook Live. So Shane mm-hmm. Hayes did ask, like, how do we get a copy of the video? So you st- I think he's referring to your videos that you're talking yep. about. Um, yep, and- so I'll, um, I'll, 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 get, I'll get all that um, sent off to you guys straight away. Awesome, and we'll put that in the Facebook group. Um, mm-hmm. And we've got uh, Mark Ruttenstein is asked, um, what type of video do you see uh, best? So the talking head style video, uh, an uh, animation style video, or more lifestyle images, which is kind of the, uh, I think I think mm-hmm. you guys in the industry call it like B-roll and like uh, you're out. pan over a Bondi beach that gets yeah. in the lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you want. This is the view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Look, I think the key thing is it's the people. Um, your content has to showcase you, your team, um, as well as your clients. Um, so that when people watch this content, they go, wow, I want. Like, so, you know, in terms of with the clients, it's, it's, it's seeing what, um, what they've been able to accomplish through, uh, through the work that, they, that you've done with them. And the critical thing is they get to know you personally. Um, animations, I'm, I'm very much against them just because there's no heart and soul to them. Um, so yeah, the, uh, it, at the end of the day, video is a conversation. Um, and so that's where we, we feel you're going to get the best value is when people get a sense of who you are, what drives you, what inspires you, um, then that's, that's, that's what they're going to, they're going to connect with. Yeah. Um, from from a you know, uh, from a psychology perspective, I know that uh, when we talk to each other in person, we actually notice these micro, almost like spasms or muscle movements in our face to recognize whether or not this person is someone that's like me, or whether or not they're trying to be deceiving, or they're trying to help, mm. or they're caring or endearing. So, uh, you know, that sort of supports that that thing that you know they want to know who you are, and a phone just doesn't cut it anymore. It's like, well, let me mm. let me let me get a sense of who you are. Um, following on, Dylan Martin, uh, uh, goody but an oldie, how long do you suggest for quick explainer videos? I like to try and keep ours to 90 seconds or less, ideally less. Yeah, I think, I think that's um, a pretty spot on length. Um, but again, you know, if, if, there's, if there's great information, um, people will keep listening. Um, the caveat to that, however, is you want there to be a call to action. So yeah. rather than just be putting out content that goes for two, three minutes and people just drop off, um, you know, if you're able to keep it quite, quite concise, you're able to have that call to action. Now, whether that's, um, you know, hey, look, guys, hope you're loving, loving the content. Please leave some comments below. Um, please like our page on Facebook. Um, if you feel that, you know, we can, um, if it's worth having a chat, if you've got some issues, if this has brought up some concerns, um, you know, we've got a blog article that talks more about it. And then at the end of the blog article, you've got a, an ability for people to get in contact. The key thing is make it easy for people to get in contact. And at the same time, make sure they know um, that there is a next step. Um, Cause yeah, the worst, the worst thing is, yeah, you put up something awesome. It just ends and then uh, they just go on with the day, keep scrolling along. Cause you, yeah, you really want people to, to keep engaging with the brand. So absolutely 60 to 90 seconds. Um, but it just comes down to, to what the content is, how much explanation is needed. Um, so that, cause the worst thing you can do is have a piece of content and people go, Oh, I got nothing out of that. Oh, okay. I'm moving on kind of thing. So it's just finding that balance. Mm. All right, we are quickly running out of time. But my last question uh, is, where do you see the, the future of video? Where do you see it going? Oh, wow, that, that'd be an interesting one to play back in the years ahead. Um, <laughs> as, as technology, you know, like constantly improves, I mean, like it's getting easier and easier to make content. So I guess, oh, sorry, let me start again. The, we're in what people are calling the connection economy. So you're going to do work with people you uh you like you like and trust you you know like and trust and that's where video helps out it helps you build up those connections so you're watching people you get a sense of who they are you go do i like do i know this person sorry do i um now that i know this person do i like them and then do i trust them which 
it comes back to your point, Ray, on, you know, about being able to see people and see what their intentions are and, and do they really want to help you or not. So that's where video is going to be powerful. Like I think in within a matter of months and it's happening now, if you don't have compelling content, um, you're not gonna you're not gonna survive because people are gonna be like, well, I'll just go to someone who I love the way they they communicate. Um, and so the challenge now for video production companies is how to make that content, like how to constantly evolve, evolve. And and for us, it's been recognizing it needs to be that that digital marketing aspect. That success is not here's a video. It's you're getting a result. You're getting clients. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm. Purpose, uh, personally very bullish on video i think you know i look at my own as a consumer i watch videos constantly you look at some of the biggest companies in the world facebook are all in on video amazon mm. is moving into video like like every big company netflix is all about video content so mm. uh, we need to, as advisors to be playing in this space as well i think so oh, last because we are over time how do people get in contact with yourself um, well, so what I'll do is I'll, um, I guess the best way it feels probably post will, you can send out my details. I mean, um, storydriven.agency is the website. Um, what I'll do is when I get all those videos together, I think um, that'll be, a, that, you know, in terms of that link, I'll have, a, it'll be hosted on our website. And um, yeah, from there, it's, it's very, very easy, you know, phone number, email, however you want to reach. Awesome. And you can join the Facebook group as well and kind of get in there and, and get involved in discussions, um, which will be great. Um, just want to thank you, uh, Chris, uh, for coming in and giving us all your insights. It's really, uh, it's, it's a space that I know lots of advisors are thinking yeah. about. Um, we, you know, XY Advisor, we, our community um, has grown a lot through video content as well. So it's kind mm. of really um, pointing it to what we're doing within the XY Advisor community. Um, so I know it's a, it's a really good big topic um, and I hope that some advisors out there have um, been inspired and are going to go and record some videos this afternoon. So fantastic. Thank you again, fantastic. Yeah. Thank and, you boys. And yeah, I'll, um, I'll get on the Facebook live and answer any more questions you may have. And um, yeah, just want to have a chat. I'm more than happy to, um, to see how, how, um, how video can yeah, help, help you guys get further along. Awesome. Very generous. Thank you, Chris. I think, yeah, everyone love it. loving this stuff, yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, everyone, for watching live on Facebook. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And, again, thanks to AAA for uh, supporting XY Live. Uh, and if you're in Brizzy and you haven't registered for the XY social event, uh, then look yourself in the mirror and go and click that red button. <laughs> um, because you must be there. Adrian Patty's organising it. And he has the credit card, so uh, it is going to be an enjoyable night. Um, so make sure you get along. And if you know other advisors on Facebook and you're friends with them on Facebook, invite them to the Facebook group. Um, and then Jackie will hit them up and say, fill out this form and uh, to get involved, just to read our guidelines, just to make sure everyone is um, being kept under control. And so we... Uh, don't need to do so much work um, keeping people in line, which is uh, important. So thank you everyone for watching. Uh, and next week, what have we got next week? I've got it up here. We have uh, Steve Nelson on how to drive efficiencies in your advice business. So make sure you tune in. We're going on XY Live and we're not on Zoom anymore. So uh, make sure you tune in at 12 p.m. next Thursday. Thanks again, Chris. Thanks, Ray J. And I'll see Thanks, you guys next week. Thank <laughs> you.